So welcome to today's session, what is construction management? Um, as you all have probably heard if you've attended our past sessions, my name is Kim Carr. I'm the affiliate director for the ACE Mentor Program of Baltimore. Um, I also work with the Maryland Center for Construction Education and Innovation, which houses the Build Your Path Program. Um, so the two organizations are happy to have the ACE webinar series today. As I mentioned before we get started, we want to um, address a few housekeeping items. Um, we do ask that you please stay muted at all times if you are not um, speaking. Um, we do ask we hold all questions to the end. If you can look at the top right hand of your screen, you should see um, a feature with three shapes, triangle, circle, square on that item. You can click on it and there's a Q&A feature. Um, at the end of today's content, we will be addressing any questions that come through, or as many as we can. Um, and so using that feature as you think of any questions will be helpful for the end. Um, if there are any questions that we do not address during the time constraints of today's meeting, we will get out to you all with the recording. In addition, you can use the chat box feature um, for any comments or questions you may have. The Q&A feature will make sure that we get them addressed at the end of the session. So for today's agenda, we are going to cover a little bit of a review from last week's What is the Built Environment presentation. If you did not see that, this will be some new information to you, but a quick overview as to what is construction management. And then we are pleased enough to have three panelists, industry professionals who do work in construction management, to talk to us a little bit about their experiences and how they entered into the profession. And then we will, as I mentioned, open it up for the Q&A. Okay. Sorry, some technical difficulties. Okay. So as a, as a refresher from last week's uh, presentation. Um, contractors are normally broken down into two groups. We have our um, construction managers, which is what we're here to talk about today, or the general contractors, as well as the skilled trades or subcontractors, which we'll have a session on two weeks from Tuesday. As a part of the team of AEC professionals, construction project managers coordinate the work of the skilled contractors and subcontractors. Typically, a member of the construction management team does have a college degree, usually in construction management, civil engineering, or a similar field of study. But alternatively, individuals who have worked in the skilled trades often move into construction management roles with years of field experience. So construction managers have a wide variety of responsibilities that our panelists will touch on later today. But um, generally, they may include working with the architects and engineers to develop plans, establish timetables, and determine costs, hire and manage subcontractors and employees, ensure all of the work on the project is up to code, distribute resources, ensure contractors follow plans and specifications, manage relationships among AEC industry professionals and with the clients, create checkpoints or benchmarks as part of overall time management, and identify potential internal risks, such as unrealistic scheduling commitments and external risks, such as natural disasters, and create contingency plans for these risks. So with this wide variety of roles, a construction management team is often made up of many different individuals. Some of them include general project manager who oversees the planning, design, and construction of a project from its beginning to end. A pre-construction manager, which oversees a job before construction starts, including the estimation and bidding process. Construction estimators who are generally responsible for estimating the work of a particular project. They estimate work by gathering proposals, blueprints, specifications, and related documents. A superintendent who is on the job site and responsible for managing the subcontractors. 
a virtual design and construction manager, who's also known as a VDC manager, that works in pre-construction to coordinate the 3D model supplied by the architect with the plans needed for the subcontractors, and a safety manager. And while safety is everyone's responsibility, the safety manager on the job is responsible for inspecting the site to reduce the risk of accidents. So as I mentioned, um, with these wide variety of jobs, we wanted to highlight a few of our ACE mentors who are work in construction management. Um, we have the pleasure of having Tanya, Eric, and Jeff with us today. I'm going to have them introduce themselves, but how today is going to work, we have a, a few set number of questions. If you attended What is Architecture, it's going to run very similar. Hear a little bit about the stories from our panelists. Um, of how they entered the industry and what their specific role as it currently stands looks like. Um, so we are going to have every panelist answer every question. And for ease of understanding, we are going to go in the same order. So as it appears on my screen, I'm gonna have Tanya start, um, then we'll have Eric answer the question, and then Jeff, if that's okay with our panelists. So I'm gonna ask Tanya to kick it off. Um, we're gonna have our panelists introduce themselves, give their name, their title, and the company that they currently work for. Oh, Tanya, I do not, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. Nope. Okay. No worries. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Tanya Potter, and I'm a senior manager with the Howard Hughes Corporation in Columbia, Maryland. We're a real estate development uh, company doing a lot of work around the Meriwether Post Pavilion. And I've been with the company for four years and I also was a consultant for them for five years prior to. Thank you, Tanya and Eric. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Stevenson. I'm a project manager with Southway Builders, uh, which is a, a general contractor in Baltimore City. Thank you, Eric and Jeff. Yes, I'm Jeff Cooper. I'm a vice president at the Whiting Turner Contracting Company. We are based in Baltimore, but we're nationwide. And I've been I've been with the company for 26 years. And really, um, my career has been as a project manager. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So um, we're going to start a little bit at the beginning. I'm going to ask our panelists to tell us a little bit about um, their background. Um, going as early back into childhood, if it per, if it pertains to the question, and how they became interested in construction management or the construction industry as a whole. So, Tanya, can you hear me? Yes, I can't hear your audio, um, Kim. So, I think I know the next question. I'm, I'm still working on that part, but I'll, I'll answer. Okay. Um, my, my background, how I got into construction management was a little backwards, um, or not backwards, it just took a little journey. I studied architecture. I went to Miami University in Ohio for, for an architecture program, always interested in, in cities and the built environment, and wasn't quite sure architecture was the right thing, but I wanted to try it, so I found a program for a four-year and then a two-year master's, which we talked about on Tuesday. It's one of the avenues to become an architect. So I pursued the four-year degree, graduated, and worked in a few architects' office and um, took some, wasn't quite satisfied. It took some construction management courses at Drexel University in Philadelphia and um, eventually found my way into, um, into the field. Thank you, Tanya. Um, and Eric, how about your journey? Um, so my first construction related job uh, is when I was uh, 17 or 18 years old. It was the summer in between uh, my senior year and going to college at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Yay, Tanya. Um, and so that job was at, as an electrician's helper. So I was working like on the construction site um, hands-on uh, with tools and also getting guys coffee 
Uh, but that was a really cool exposure to construction, and that kind of sparked my interest to go to Drexel, um, where I started off in engineering, uh, much like Tanya started in architecture, uh, but found my way into the construction management program, uh, which was a great fit for me. It's what I still do now. Thanks, Eric and Jeff. So I always I always like to build things from the time I was a small child and um, playing with Legos and stuff. And um, and then as I got older, I, I was involved in a lot of landscaping and, and doing small construction projects, little retaining walls and decks. And and I had a friend uh, that took a job with Whiting Turner, a friend in college. And and I went and, and saw him and saw what he was doing. And I said, this is what I want to do. It was just a totally different scale than than what I had ever done before. So um, I studied civil engineering and eventually took a job uh, with Whiting Turner. Thank you, Jeff. So as you can hear, there's many different avenues um, throughout the industry, but um, that's part of the you know purpose of today's or today's and the series as a whole is understanding if you like this industry there are many ways to get to many different jobs and opportunities um, but you know we talked a little bit briefly about how you sparked interest but if you could all expand upon you, you've been in the industry for a, a little while and if you could expand upon how you got to where you are now so maybe some of the jobs and different um, pathways that it took to get to where you are currently expand on that a little bit Tanya? Great. Um, can you hear me? Okay, great. Take this out. Um, so my path, like I said, I studied architecture and um, and and worked in an architect's office um, for about five years and decided I needed some real field experience. I'm I'm you know creating these these drawings that people have to to build from and just didn't feel comfortable and I wanted to see how it was put into the industry. So I ended up um, actually working for Whiting Turner um, uh, for several years, working as a project engineer and a project manager and, and learned so much. You know, with the background of architecture, I kind of understood how the, the drawings were created and that process and then going actually into the built environment and you know, seeing how it's really done and how they translate the drawings and procure it, um, you know, all those processes that that Kim was alluding to, the estimating, and and I've learned so much. One thing about this industry, you're just constantly learning. Um, and then after that, I um, took another avenue and got into development. Um, real as I worked for uh, real estate developers that um, created a vision. They had the money. They wanted to build a building. So I kind of bridged the two, um, the two backgrounds, the, my architecture, the construction, and then what I do is, is um, my title is a construction design and construction manager for a developer. So I work as an owner's eyes and work with the construction team, the design team, um, you know, overseeing the work. So it's just a little different avenue but but really interesting um, that you know to, to see all aspects of the whole process um, is, is really helpful. Jeff, would you mind going next while I multitask? Sure, sure, I understand. Um, so the the way I got where I am is I um, I started in an entry level position, um, which with Whiting Turner, that's called a project engineer. Um, I actually started my career in South Florida. We have a Fort Lauderdale office and I worked there for 11 years and, and started as a project engineer and then became a project manager. And um, there's different levels of project manager. And, and as, your, as your abilities increase and you learn more, be consistent with Tanya's theme of your old, there's always more to learn. And um, if you're aggressive and you're really curious and you try to learn from all the people around you, you can continue to advance and continue to get better. And um, eventually I made it up and am now a vice president and have a lot of people that work under me that are, that are coming up the same way I did. So um, that's really how I got to where I am today. Do you need me to keep talking, Eric? 
No, that's all right. <laughs> um, so, as I mentioned, um, after high school, I went to Drexel University. Um, and I found my way into the uh, construction management program. One of the things that's cool about Drexel is they do a co-op program, uh, which is sort of like internships that are built into your major. So another role, disapprove. Sorry, guys. He, he is multitasking. Disapprove. Disapprove. Forgive me. Can you hear me? That's it. Disapprove. You, everybody's getting a real world sample of what <laughs> Eric's day is made of. <laughs> we will have Eric catch up on, on his role um, and how he got to where he is in, in, after our next question. Tanya, if you don't mind... I'm diving into, I know you talked briefly about what your role is at Howard Hughes, but a little bit about maybe what some of your jobs and responsibilities are and more context around um, you know, Howard Hughes in general. Yeah, so a um, little twist on a little difference between what Jeff and Eric do working directly for a, a contractor um, like I said, I work at Howard Hughes is an owner. We own, um, we are a master developer of Columbia. So under our roof, we have developers that find the clients um, that want to have, want to be in a building or the type of building, um, find the funds, um, you know, from loans or in-house or equity. We're a, we are a, um, a publicly owned and traded company on Wall Street. And, and then once they have that vision, I'm in the uh, design and construction management part where we'll take that vision and we will hire an architect, um, the civil engineer, all, you know, all the engineering team, design team that we need, and, and then we'll hire a construction manager, a contractor that can provide the um, uh, pre-construction services, the estimating, constructability reviews, um, basic, you know, they're going to build the building, um, and, and my role is to manage all that process. I have to report to the developer we're, that we're meeting the budget, we're meeting the schedule. We, you know, try to pull out of out of the ownership team um, decisions that need to be made quickly. You know, we've got a problem, or um, you know, the client wants to add a new stair or something, what does that cost? Do we want to do it? So I'm kind of the eyes and ears of, of the owner on the spot. I do not um, direct the subcontractors. That's what Eric and, and Jeff would do. So it's a little different perspective um, than really being um, you know, at risk is what we call it, where you're actually building, you've got to, to get those contracts, which I'm sure Eric and Jeff will talk about. So it's a, it's a it's just a little twist on the on the um, on the the scope of construction management, but it's very interesting because we're also coordinating with the marketing team and and um, you know the accounting and leasing. Um, so there's just a lot of different different hats um, that we have to to uh, address, different responsibilities. Perfect. Well then, um, Eric, I'll let you dive in a little bit about, you know, where you came from after your college experience at Drexel up into um, your current role in an organization in Southway. Sure. So I'm so sorry about that. You have my undivided attention now. Um, another role that I have in addition to uh, my job at Southway is I sit on the Baltimore City Planning Commission. Uh, which is a board that uh, votes on a lot of zoning issues and things like that um, that are uh, you know related to building and development um, and those meetings have a tendency to go long so i had a little bit of overlap just now um, but i'm back so to finish what i was saying about after high school um, drexel the co-op program i changed my major actually a couple times uh, before i found one that was a really good fit construction management um, you know, all of uh, you guys and girls that are, you know, graduating or close to graduating are being uh, asked to make decisions about what you want to do for the rest of your life. 
um, and it's okay if you don't completely know the answer, um, and it's okay if you try out a few different things before you land on it. Um, so after college, I um, graduated with my degree in construction management. I got hired by a general contractor, uh, worked for them for a few years as an assistant project manager or project engineer. Um, and then because of my degree in construction management, I was sort of fast-tracked to a project manager role, uh, which was great. Um, that was in Philadelphia, where Drexel's located. Um, and another opportunity that I had through uh, work was to relocate. Um, the company had a project in Baltimore or just outside of Baltimore, and we're looking for people to go down and work on the job. So I was willing to do that, and it was a good opportunity for me. That's how I ended up uh, here, which is my new home that I love. Um, so currently I work for a general contractor, Southway, that's uh, located here in Baltimore. Um, we've got 90 employees and rapidly growing, uh, which I mentioned because the industry is just, you know, really strong right now. We're always looking for talented folks up and down the ranks. There's a huge shortage, um, from labor, um, up through management and, uh, you know, skilled trades as well. Um, so, you know, that's why we're here to really encourage you guys to look into all these different opportunities. Um, but Southway does commercial as well as multifamily affordable housing um, and uh, historic reuse property uh, projects, which are some of the cooler jobs, uh, renovating buildings um, like old theaters and things like that, and to be uh, modernized and reused either again as a theater or sometimes they're repurposed uh, for new things like um, apartments, offices, arts and museums, and things like that. So that's what I'm doing now. Thank you, Eric. And Jeff and A spoke about how you got up to, to your role as vice president, but if you could talk a little bit about what those re specific responsibilities look like. So, so the way, the way our company is set up, um, I'm really, I'm really sort of running my own smaller company um, with the support of, of a big company. So I have um, several different project teams um, that are building projects. And I'm also responsible for going out and, and marketing um, me or, or my group and my company. I'm in finding new work and, and getting um, getting leads and chasing those leads and and hopefully turning them into projects. Um, I do a lot of pre-construction work, which Tanya mentioned, um, giving a developer early early feedback on what we think a project is going to cost and what we how long it's going to take and how long is it going to take to get a permit and all those kinds of things that we that we may have experience with in the jurisdiction that we're, we're talking about. Um, so they really need those, those, that kind of feedback in order to make a go, no go decision very early on before they invest a lot of time and money into a project and then, and then can't afford it. So we end up doing a lot of that. Um, I am heavily involved in recruiting. So um, I recruit for my group and, and, and for the company as a whole, I spend a lot of time, uh, with young people in for either internships or full-time positions. Um, I also um, need to manage the money. Obviously, we're a for-profit business, so um, the bottom line does matter. It's it's important to uh, make money to be, be able to continue to give people opportunities. Um, and and I'm, I'm, um, I'm always looking for new ways to provide value to to our customers which are uh, commercial building developers so i'm um, trying to be innovative as much as possible and and look for new ways to do things um, that might be more economical than than the way we've traditionally done things thank you jeff as you can see there's, i mean we talked a little bit in the intro but construction management is a pretty wide umbrella and while managing people and managing jobs um, is at the root of it all, what you do and who you work for makes a difference in kind of what those responsibilities look like. Um, but with that, 
I want to open up to our panelists to talk about maybe some of the, the fun side of it, what your favorite project might have been. Um, I don't know if, if our panelists would agree, but a lot of times we hear that one of the best parts of working in the built environment industry as a whole is the stamp you put on you know, the landscape around you. So you can look at a building and say, I was a part of that, or I was I played a role in getting that project built, and now it you know, in the community and makes a difference. Um, and, and we want to highlight that. So Tanya, if you want to talk a little bit about maybe one of some of your favorite types of project or specific project that you've worked on that you particularly um, found interesting. Sure. Um, I think it was also talked about with the um, the architectural team, um, not specifically to answer that question right off, but the, the joy of my job and 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 I think of the industry is is the collaboration of working together. Like Jeff mentioned, you know, uh, a, with a developer where I work, it's really important to have great team members, a good construction manager, um, you know, to provide the estimates, to you know, give like here's some really cool ideas, here's a different approach. But you like. Well, um, a good friend of mine said, you tap the wisdom in the room. There are so many, you know, people have so many different experiences and backgrounds and journeys that you really want to pull that out. And, and that's like an art in itself. It's that team environment. So anybody interested in the field, if you like working to, to um, with other people or creative or, you know, just like to see, you know, the joy of working with with people and and the and then the end result. It's it's super. It's really satisfying. And the friendships last years um, because you've gone through something really big together. And I, I think some of my favorite projects. I mean, what we're working on at Merriweather, this we're creating a whole new city within a city. Um, has been really exciting. I've been working with a lot of the road or the infrastructure, not that I'm a civil engineer, but you get exposed to all different types of things. Um, we brought in this art sculpture from Walla Walla, Washington, that it's a hypnotic, it moves, it's really funky. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the process that I like. Um, and, and yes, it's really cool to be a walk through a building that you've built and, and experience it and then you share it with your tenants that are just like elated to be there. That's really cool. So um, just, just a lot of excitement and growth and continual learning in the industry. So Kim and Tonya, you're both absolutely right. There's just something really special about looking at um, buildings in the skyline um, or dotting the landscape and you know knowing that you were a part of it. Um, and you know all the memories that come rushing back from the project experience um, another thing that i really enjoy uh, because i've worked on all different project types um, is um, like tonya said with the process but also getting to know the end user because uh, a lot of times um, you know the building has special requirements depending on how it's going to be used and that really can influence the project um, so while my entire career i've only worked in construction I've been exposed to the restaurant industry uh, through the construction of restaurants. I've been exposed to the casino industry through, you know, our work um, on casino projects. Um, and as well as uh, now at Southway, um, you know, I'm being exposed to affordable housing and how those projects work, uh, both on the construction side um, and a little bit more exposure uh, to what Tanya does on sort of the business side and making the projects. Um, you know, feasible. Um, and lastly, oh, my favorite project. Well, my favorite project, there's lots, um, you know, it's sort of like favorite children, um, although I don't have any kids. But <laughs> um, I'll say my current uh, project is my favorite, and that is the Lexington Market, uh, the new Lexington Market that's under construction right now uh, between Utah and Packer Streets downtown. Um, and part of the reason I love Lexington Market is because it's a really important project for Baltimore. Um, Lexington Market holds a special place in a lot of people's um, hearts and is a big part of the history of Baltimore. Uh, it's a very high profile project with lots of you know media coverage and attention. Um, but most importantly um, is the you know the impact that it's going to have uh, when it's completed 
um, you know, what it's going to mean for the community and the change that it's hopefully um, going to, you know, facilitate for, for Baltimore, for that part of Baltimore. So, um, you know, these projects can have really big impact beyond the bricks and mortar, and um, it's cool to be a part of that, too. Thank you. And Jeff? Um, there have been a lot of different projects that I've been involved in, um, and they all have their unique challenges, and, and, and um, they've all been exciting from, from the small to the big. Um, one of the things that's been so interesting in my career is that um, is that you really you really have to adapt um, unless you get um, I don't know if the word lucky is the right word but sometimes you get involved in a particular industry and the, and the work just continues um, the hospital work has been very good um, for the last as long as I've been in the business, I, I don't I haven't done any hospital work we as a company do a lot and there are guys that have started guys and girls that have started and they're in that industry and they work in hospitals their whole career. Um, so, and I say, I was reluctant to use the word lucky because I really feel like I was lucky in that the, mo the majority of my work when I started was in retail. And I, I did a big regional retail mall of 20 plus years ago. And, and now as everybody knows, we're, we're more likely to be tearing them all down than we are to be building a new one. So the retail market is certainly not what it was. So it's sort of, it's sort of given me the opportunity to go into different things. And, and I've just done a, a wide variety of work. Um, Tanya talked about the work in downtown Columbia and, and really one of the first projects that Howard Hughes did was the was the conversion of the old Rouse headquarters building into the Whole Foods. And um, I, I'm sure I spent more time in pre-construction on that job than I did, than it took to actually do the conversion and, and do the build um, because it was really hard to get something that worked. And, you know, I didn't have the, the benefit of the full vision of, of the people that Tanya works with now, but um, they really wanted to create, it had to be the right tenant. It had to be the, because it's the center of everything. And um, finally, Whole Foods um, agreed to come or, or they, they were able to finalize a deal. And we converted the building from, a, from an office headquarters to a grocery store. So that's really, um, and every time I drive by, it's still kind of amazing to me that we were, that we were able to actually pull it off and, um, and make it, I mean, it was such a, it was in such disrepair and, I still think it might have been cheaper to tear it down, but it's a it's a historic landmark. So, um, really, the, to be able to repurpose it, um, I mean, most of the credit there goes to the developers um, that had the vision. I'm I'm just I'm just the builder, but um, um, that's that's really a cool a cool job that we did, um, and now has become really the the center of of the downtown Columbia redevelopment. Thank you all. And as we head into our last question for our panelists, I want to remind those students on the call today, uh, please take a moment and, and use the, the question and answer box. We do have a few more minutes. But to round out our discussion today, um, Tanya, I'd like you to kick it off. If you have any last words of advice for students who are interested in, um, in entering construction management or the industry as a whole, and maybe that advice is what you look for um, when your organization is hiring or people you want to work with, um, what specifically do you think, you know, skills or traits or experience do you think would be helpful um, for students moving forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I do need to give a shout out to Jeff's team did an awesome job at the Whole Foods. Um, they worked very hard and made it happen. So they're not just the contractor. Um, but advice going forward, I mean, this industry, industry, like I said, I started in architecture, had no plans of getting into construction. It just kind of evolves. And there's so many directions you can go. Um, like Eric alluded, you don't have to figure out your life in high school. Um, you just take a step. And then the more people that you meet and the more experience that you get, you'll find your way. Um, and and as a whole, I think in this industry, you have to be curious and work hard and always want to learn. There's there's so much to do and and great. Um, you know, I started, you know, at the bottom in all my in all the industries um, 
and 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 worked my way up. So it it takes time, but you really learn that way. Um, at, at Howard Hughes, we are uh, instituting an intern program um, this year for. Um, we've done shadowing for high schoolers. We've done shadowing before for a week or two just to get a flavor. Um, and then we're reaching out to um, uh, college students, you know, to come in and, and do an internship and, and, and learn the industry because you know, we really need young people involved. And it's, it's a development, um, real estate development is really dynamic. Um, there's, a, there's a lot going on. And you know, you can get into finance, accounting, marketing, um, and then obviously construction and design. Um, but it's it's a really flexible industry that you can kind of find your way through throughout your career. And I'm I'm still doing it, <laughs> so it's it's uh, I highly recommend it. Thanks, Tanya and Eric. Any any last words of advice? Um. So very much like Tanya just said, um, you know, get as much experience as possible, um, whether that's through internships or, you know, experience in the field or, um, you know, there's no better way to find out if something's right for you than to try it. Um, so those internships will be really valuable and, uh, you know, be a sponge, uh, whatever opportunities do present themselves, just make sure you're, you're soaking up that experience because you never know how it will apply down the road. Um, you know, I don't think it's any accident that uh, Tanya went from architecture to construction because I know how much we value um, people with architectural background and understanding in construction. So, you know, those sort of cross-discipline um, experiences are really valuable and sometimes are what help uh, people stand out in job interviews and just in life. Um, and also um, think about um, if you're willing to relocate. Um, there's opportunities in design and construction all over the country and all over the world, um, as well as right here in Baltimore. Um, one of the things I like, one of the reasons that I um, chose to work for Southway is because they're focused here uh, locally in Baltimore um, and have that uh, community impact. But at the same time, I have a friend that graduated with me from Drexel and moved with me to Baltimore. Um, and instead of staying here, continued on in his career uh, down to Miami um, and is doing very well uh, building high rises down there. So there's opportunities all over the world. Um, and this is definitely a field that can take you places. Thanks, Eric. And to, to finish us off, Jeff, any last words? You know, I think what Eric and Tanya said. Um, really, I don't, I don't have anything new. Sometimes when, when you say something a little bit differently, maybe, maybe people can respond to it a little bit differently. So um, it really mirrors what they said, but um, you need to be a good communicator. And, and let me preface all of this with, you don't need to have all these skills today. And, and for those of you that are in high school, I doubt that anybody does. Um, you're going to be good at some things and not so good at other things. And the advice I would tell you was, is get out of your comfort zone and, and you get better at something when you try and, and you're not afraid to fail. You, you learn by failure. Um, if you don't take a chance and get out of your comfort zone, you're not going to get better at something. But if you don't feel like you're a great communicator today, then, then communicate more. Um, really, really push yourself to try new things and, and you will get better at it if, if you try. Um, so the communication side of things, and I think our ability to describe technical processes and assemblies is something that, that really helps in the construction industry because you're, you're, you're visualizing things that you might not be able to see um, or the way something needs to go together that's not put together yet. So to be able to describe it and and, um, and, and express yourself technically, I think, is an important trait. Um, you need to treat people fairly and with respect. Um, I, think, I think you will be able to learn something from everybody. So um, make friends, and you make friends by, by being fair to people and treating them with respect. Um, and you'll likely see them again on the next job. Um, these, this is not a 
the construction community is smaller than you might think. So you start alienating people and you're burning bridges that, that you, you always, you're always going to need help from the, from the people on your project. Um, so um, it's not always, it's not always um, an easy thing, but, but you can do it with um, respect and, and without alienating people. Um, you need to learn to manage money. We're constantly, we're in a, we're in a business where, where we're competing for limited dollars. So you've got to be able to manage that and um, always look for value. You need to be ambitious and work hard and continue to be curious and continue to strive to learn more. Um, everybody around you is, a, is an opportunity to learn something because there's so many different trades and, and Eric, you know, the job he's talking about up at, um, Lexington Market, he's probably got 30 different trades on that job, maybe more. And each of those people is a specialist in what they're doing. And they probably know more than Eric and I do about, about what they're doing. So it's an opportunity for us to learn from every one of them. Um, and just at your age, get exposure. And I think Eric talked about that and, and Tanya did too. If there's internship opportunities or a job site tour that you're going to hopefully, hopefully we're going to be back to more normalcy um, in the springtime, but a job site tour, ask questions and, and expose yourself to as much as you can so that you, so that you're able to, to direct your path towards where, where it, it, it hopefully makes you happy. And it's really what your calling is. Um, so the more, the more, the more you absorb from those people around you and, the, and those people already in the industry, the better off you're going to be and, and the better equipped you're going to be to make those kinds of decisions. Thank you all. I think um, there is not a student on the call or anyone on the call that could say this isn't great words of wisdom and advice, um, especially with such successful careers that you all have had. Um, I want to kind of echo what Jeff finished this off with, with exposure. And I think a lot of our students on the call are part of the ACE Mentor Program or are interested in it, I think, in high school. Um, we that is a great starting point. You can start to test all of the different avenues that you can take, get that experience and get this knowledge point. Um, continue to participate in these sessions. A lot of you who have signed up for today's session have signed up for the future ones. So a reminder that next Tuesday is our What is Engineering? And uh, Thursday is going to have speakers from different college pathway programs um, in the local area related to the built environment. So check those out. Um, but one question did come in. I want to throw to the panelists before uh, today. Um, so, uh, a student was asking for various contractors. Um, do you feel that with that knowledge you would be comfortable or have ever thought about starting a business of your own? Pretty, I know uh, it's a lot of students' goal is to eventually open their own business, but just out of curiosity. Any, pitching that to anybody? If, I, if can, I can respond to that one. Um, I really thought when I was younger, I thought that was the end goal. Um, and as I got into the industry and, and with the types of work that we do, um, I have no desire to do that now. I just, I wouldn't be um, doing the same type of work. We do, uh, we do small work, but we do a lot of big work as well. And for me to go out and try to start my own business, I'd be, I'd be building much smaller projects. And um, the other, the other thing I really like about about where I am is that I work with um, uh, great people, both above me and below me. I'm, I'm, I'm involved in recruiting, as I said earlier, and I'm recruiting graduate engineers. Um, really, really some great people. And I think as a small business owner. You're, you're, um, you're, you don't have that same opportunity. You might, you might have one person working for you, um, and it's going to take a long time to build that. Uh, I have 40 plus people working for me, and um, it just really gives me the backing that I need to really do what I want to do working for a larger company. I want to kind of add for the students, the what is architecture. This came up in that session as well in working um, for yourself and in that context they're talking about starting your architecture firm and to your point every single one of these companies was started by somebody 
So um, there is always that option and that drive if that's your desire. But um, definitely people need to work for the ones that exist currently and are successful. Um, I know we are over at 345. Eric, Tony, if you had any additional questions, please, I did not want to cut you off. But um, uh, that is our only question at the moment. If anyone has additional questions, students, please feel free to contact me. You have my contact information, and we can make sure they're answered. But with that, I want to thank our panelists, Eric, Tanya, Jeff. Thank you so much for telling your story, talking a little bit um, about your experiences. I look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday's session to hear from our engineering mentors. Um, and thank you all again. Thanks, Ken, and good luck to all the students. Thanks, Bye. everybody, and, and, and hope to see you in the ACE program this, this coming spring. And Jeff and Tanya, I also hope we're back to normalcy eventually. I know. <laughs> yes. We all do. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll come down and see.